How's it going, people? My name is Dylan. Welcome to my first gameplay. Today we're going a little bit blast in the past. This was a really popular game back when I was a kid, and when I checked my Steam, I hadn't played it since 2016. Can't jump in All this of his game. All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided Apparently. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Well, let's go this way. Anything in there? I remember being a kid, I had this little netbook computer that I played this game on, so <laughs> it definitely did not run this well on that computer. This one has no problem running this game, it's just smooth. It's a little bit, you know, of seeing where you've come from, that kind of stuff, though I still can't get good webcam quality because I have to record this off of my graphics card, which basically means I do not have access to all my fancy dancy recording software that I when could Stanley use. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, oh, damn. he entered the door on his left. Interrupt me, why don't you? Can you not do that? Thanks! No, I'm gonna go against your better wishes. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Apparently, there's nothing else to do! But eager to get back to business, oh. Stanley took the first open door on his left. I don't want to. I want to go against all of your better wishes and not do that. Just saying. None of these doors open! And it's, I don't remember anything about this game, so you know, so this is all like kind of new to me. The light's turning on when I go in there. But I also want to go over here. Don't close behind me. Ah, oh, thank gosh. Stanley was so bad no! at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I didn't want it to close behind me. <laughs> oh, yes, you're very close too? Yeah, uh huh. Okay. What is this? Okay, I guess I'm going on to this peculiar spot. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you. Where are you taking all me? This time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. I'll check this door first. Ah, uh -huh, door closes. Can I not open a single door? Oh. <laughs> of course I say that when I open the one door that allows me to do it, right? Jesus. You need to be the one that was a jump scare to reach out to her if you can truly place your faith in another Okay Oh Stanley is that you? Uh, hold on sweetie sorry to keep you waiting I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven Alright Okay there we go all right now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> oh. Gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. You're a jerk. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. No, no I refuse to follow Sorry. you. Sorry. 
but you're in my story now. I feel very uncomfortable with the situation. Fine. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stan. What? Asks for respect, right? No, I refuse. Fine. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Bro. I, I have to do it. Not because I want to. Because I, I just can't move on to pressing five. Hey. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. You now know what? The only reason home. I'm not now cursing you right now is because YouTube won't let One me. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. <sighs> I don't want to push any more buttons. I want to go back out and go on the door on the left instead of the door on the right. I want to go back and make another choice. Please let me go back. Let me out. Let me go somewhere. Get rid of this damn mannequin. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work, was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Press eight to spend time with the boys. <laughs> Hell yeah. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, I chose choice. on the right. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Can I go now? You, you've beat me down. As far as I can possibly go. Give me a mannequin wife. You won't let me out of this damn apartment, which is smaller than anything I've ever seen. Like, look, that's how much of a life I have. Half of it's a kitchen, half of it's an office. That's the life I have. Who's gonna get dinner out of it, I guess? As he wandered through oh. this fantasy, the world, other half is an office now. With many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a uh -huh. yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Oh, fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. Tell my kids a story. Okay. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he oh. relived it. Shut up! And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. I don't feel free. Surely there's an answer I feel down trapped. some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps I can't go anywhere. More time. Press my press B to tell my fake wife that I love her. Fine. But there is no answer. Oh, look. How could there possibly More be? More office. In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Oh, finally. A break. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. That sounds like corporate America. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Uh, I'm going to go against him. You see? Ah. Can you just not hear me? 
How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. He's and done. Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Oh, look at that. I'm free. Wait, was that it? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No, oh, no, I feel like this is something different. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh. I, I I want to I want to do it again. Oh no, I'm doing the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous ah, room. You see? That's Thank different than last Stanley time. had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too this horrible is different. to consider. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. You know what? This time I get this. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Oh. No, oh, I need to. Do it. <laughs> oh, that's What? What? Oh no, we're going this way. Okay. Yet there hey, was not a single person it. here either. All right. Which way do I go? No way to go. Oh, this door opens. What? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. No, 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 no. There is something. There's got to be something. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just no, no, no. an empty broom closet. He doesn't want me here no for a reason. No reason to still be here. No, no, no. No, no, no. You want me? You, you want me to leave for a reason? What's it? It's baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet fa. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced there's something in here. Are you? Are you really still in the broom closet, standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Because you're hiding something. Is he gonna lock me in here? You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention either lock me in here or give me something to do in here. I, I'm convinced that there's Maybe something to in you. This is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. What? That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. I swear. That is like... <laughs> left field. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. No. 
You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. No. Oh. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Well, you got some work to do then, Hello? I guess. Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on this the This isn't your first time. <laughs> tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Nope. I'm still here, bro. There must be some sort of secret in here. No? Uh... Fine. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. Ah. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls, <laughs> controls to. <laughs> a fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, very nice up here. Okay. And executive bathroom. Ooh, fancy, but I can't go in there apparently. It's locked. Can I click buttons on this computer? No. I can't do jack all. I must walk into here. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible Ooh. truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 four five yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad stanley happened to input the correct code by hey. sheer luck amazing he stepped into the newly opened passageway oh why do i recognize this wait is there anything else i need to know Very dark in this corner. A little too dark. No, oh, doing it anyway. Why is it so dark over here? Okay. <laughs> Apparently nothing. No. Oh, okay. Whatever. Go downstairs. Hey, look! Lights. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Maybe because you're on the longest coffee break ever. <laughs> hey, knock it off. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, look! Escape! <sighs> I've gone so long going this way. I don't want to have to redo everything. <laughs> uh, screw it. 
Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh, good. It's still open. I can still go. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Uh, is still open? It's still open. I'm going to go this way. No? Nothing to talk about? Okay, we'll just keep going. It's loading! I didn't die! What? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. Jesus. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Therefore, Stanley. No! I want to go back! Aha! I knew Farewell, it! Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Apparently not. Someone had mercy, and I want to thank you. Why is it so dark? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive what? as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Did I reach the you end? See that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit star. You can see all the stuff that they planned out. I thought that you really couldn't end the game. I <laughs> said it's never the end. It's what the game said. The office. Okay. Can't open any of them. Okay. Button sounds. Selection of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke. Okay, cool. Oh, this is development of it. Okay. So that'd be number one, I assume. Here's the second one. That's the final one that we saw. Cool. Okay, yes, yeah, so you need to see an office clock. Very important. I think I'm gonna call her there. Um, thanks for watching my first gameplay. I, I plan on doing gameplays, maybe some vlogs, other stuff on here, not just gameplay, so. Let me know what you guys want to see in the comments down below. If you came from TikTok, let me know that you came from TikTok. I appreciate all of you, and we'll talk soon. Take care.